Yeah, this... Here we go. So, welcome to Evidence-Based Audio number 189. Man, that 200 is coming up soon. This is Do the Right Thing. And uh, first of all, I just want to show you a little Reaper theme if you're looking at this. It might look familiar to some of you um, OG Reaper users. And uh, hopefully it's going to be a theme that's coming out pretty soon, a Vegas kind of theme. And anyway, so so first of all, um, there's something at the Reaper forum. It's, uh, it says, Newsflash, the Bitwig Civil War. And so if you don't know Bitwig, Bitwig is another DAW. It's... Um, Roughly the same price as Reaper, I think, if you're using the professional version. Uh, $400. Um, I don't know what it does different. I, I know a lot of people love it, but um, I think it's more for creators than it is for mixers. Anyway, um, so this was a forum post over at the Reaper forum. Says the Bitwig user base is having a collective meltdown right now. You know, the regular one so many DAW companies have experienced lately. It follows the established script for these kind of events. A poor or harsh business decision makes the forums light up like a Christmas tree with endless threads and subsequent threats of rage quits and door slamming. It's then followed by the obligatory foaming of pitch, forming of pitchfork mobs with slightly different takes on just how messed up the situation really is. Long story short, Bitwig released a couple of effects that were not included in the upgrade plan and which they now sell separately. Nothing unusual here so far. Many use this business model. Bitwig is a little different, though. <clears throat> For all its swanky awesomeness, it's really quite slick. It's a damn expensive product, especially considering its pretty limited feature set. What it does well, it does amazingly well. It's basically like a huge modular synth and DAW rolled into one. How is that different than Reason? So uh, I watched the Bitwig stuff go, and it, it seems pretty impressive to me. I, I'm not going to say it's just like Reason or something, but uh, I don't really know the differences. Um, but it lacks a lot of stuff you're going to expect from a mature DAW, especially in the forms of recording and editing. The initial installment price is steep, and it has a pretty expensive yearly upgrade plan. Ooh. Many folks have accepted this because you know what you are what you get. You pay through the nose, but you get all the stuff as it comes in, which is pretty much par for the course whenever you use a new DAW and tag along as it matures. It was the case for Studio One, and it's the case now for UA Luna. Do you pay for Luna? I'm not sure if you do. I think it comes free with um, with if you buy one of these dongles. And I'm sorry, I'm still going to call this Universal Audio stuff a dongle, and if you don't like it, that's just too bad. But I, I think it's free with their stuff maybe you play pay for plugins or something i don't know um you get all the stuff in our upgrades was the selling point that bitwig made and it seems the new model even contradicts the end user license agreement on that point add to that the initial release had a bug that prompted you consistently to install packages you did not have a license for which of course made it a little on the nose for most people okay so that sounds like this may be a thing like um I like amp, IK Multimedia and Amplitude and stuff, but um, when you go through the preset browsers, there's no way to um, turn off as as far as at least as far as I know. There's no way to turn off um, showing presets for stuff you don't own, and so you just end up scrolling through a bunch of junk, and you got like a couple presets that you can actually use, and the rest you'd have to pay for some stuff, and you know it's just those those ecosystems like you know how you can't just buy a goddamn plugin anymore you gotta download the whole thing and then like it installs every single plugin they have and you just can unlock the ones that you paid for uh that sounds kind of like the same situation here um needless to say having reaper be your main dawn in these situations is quite comforting i paid less all the years i've used it than the one big bitwig upgrade i forked out Wondering if we're going to see an influx in users here, so be prepared for the whole nonlinear composition and serious modulation request. Bitwig does that quite well. Uh, they don't have a regular form, so if you're curious, just uh, you know, go to KVR. 
And uh, I considered not even going anywhere near there, but um, uh, it, it it actually turned out pretty well. But um, I want to talk about this because it's uh, here's somebody answered the confused concept of having to make more profits every year and putting that first instead of the customer base keeps the damn thing alive in the first place is quite silly. But how do you keep paying for these upgrades i mean you got you got to charge someplace and um people get quite spoiled by reaper but uh yeah so this guy answers i i honestly think the concept of them having to make money on a yearly basis isn't confused at all they keep working so of course they keep wanting to keep earning it's a fair thing to want in other businesses it's very clear what you that when you pay for a product you pay for work that has already happened the only future work you're possibly in your right to expect is that which is explicitly stated in some kind of warranty but with software each product is dependent on a bunch of other products in a rapidly evolving system and so paying for past work isn't quite good enough for most of us since we know the environment changes too much and the investment comes burnt this puts developers in a tricky situation of having to define exactly what future work a customer has paid them for since no one can know the future, and that's not easy to do. People are upset because it seemed like Bitwig had a simple answer to the question. By license, you pay for all their previous work. But the one where your upgrade plan, you pay for work from now until a year from today. The word all in those sentences turns out mattered more to people's perception of value than the big weed Bitwig team anticipated. And now many feel it's a letdown. Um Anyway, I'm glad to be using Reaper at this point. It's a similar model in some ways, but via license, you pay for all the past work and possibly years of future work too. Um, it is hard, I, I tell you, as a developer. This is a tricky thing, man. Um, you 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 got to pay your developers. Uh, you got to be smart about it. But but anyway, so I went and took a look at um, KVR and. Uh, what do I see? But threads that say they did the right thing. Now show support. Um, Bitwig did the right thing. The add on thing was a huge mistake, but I do not believe they attempted to change their business model out of greed. I think they wanted to expand their company and grow. I like most of us was upset and vocal about them keeping devices as part of the update plan. We won. They moved the line. They will lose revenue over this. And that's not at all what I wanted. I just wanted what was promised, etc. So if you're happy with how it turned out, buy the update plan if you haven't yet. I haven't yet, and I will today. I'm going to buy the update plan for a full price for the first time because I believe they deserve to do well. The product is great, and they listen to us. Um, I think that's pretty good, man. They um, they heard from their customers, and they, they upgraded. They, uh, I guess they took away this problem that was making everybody mad. Uh, and then there's uh, somebody put up another thread called the official statement um, at Bitwig. And then some douche uh, dash glitch is the name. I mean, I, I hate this. It's some clickbait where of course the guy got the mouth wide open. Yeah. It just makes me nuts. Um, let's see. Everyone makes mistakes. I know I do, but Big made a mistake, and uh, it's how they respond to their mistakes that counts. Both did the right thing. Um, yeah, I like this. I can't take anyone seriously who has their big face with gaping mouth on the still image of the video like that. I hate it. It's essentially clickbait. It's not essentially clickbait. It's clickbait. Um, this is one of those things that future generations will rightfully mock today for. At some point, word got out that if you have to make thumbnails like this to please the algorithm and the next thing you know people are smiling like a donut without questioning if it's really necessary yep um. <coughs> of course there's always the consumer advocate right um please keep in mind they did apologize because of fear of losing money it's not like they love you or something company is not your friend eh. everything is amazing no one is happy yep um so I guess there's some guy named Venus Theory that um, left over this, and I guess they had a bunch of videos and forum dramas. I guess uh, I'm not really that interested in watching whatever that is, but um, let, let's see what the um, official response thing is. There was a um, 
We've had time. So this is officially from Bitwig. We've had time to reflect on last week's special suite announcement and then responses from our community. We apologize for how we handled that and we want to make it right. Spectral Suite is now part of Bitwig Studio 4.4, uh, which came out on October 5th. Anyone with the current upgrade plan now owns Bitwig Studio 4.4 and the four Spectral Suite devices. Moving forward, all of our Bitwig Studio feature development, including devices, will be covered by the 12-month upgrade plan. Um, you know, Bitwig could still just name it something else and, and get away with it, I suppose, but, you know, they're that's uh, pretty ballsy of them. So let, let's see what this official response from this clickbait dweeb is. So Bitwig just released their official statement to the community regarding the whole debacle about the Spectral Suite uh, thing that was going on. In a couple of sentences, they released a couple of plugins that seemed to upset a little bit of stuff regarding their upgrade plan because they were released as a paid add-on. The community was very upset, and for a little while, Bitwig was quiet on the situation. And... I'm going to speculate a little bit why I think they were uh, quiet about it. I'm, I'm not saying I'm going to make any excuses or anything like that. In the statement, there was some pretty good news uh, regarding the future of Bitwig. Or just gauging by how the community is responding to the announcement already, it looks like things are pretty good. Again, I come to this with a sense of bias, obviously having been given uh, an upgrade to Bitwig uh, because I do content. But, you know, I'm just reading the community at this stage and just judging by how I think they've responded... I think, you know, from myself, it seems that faith has been restored somewhat. Um, anyway, let's read through the announcement together. So, to our... All right, don't DMCA me. I'm, I'm, I'm watching this because, you know, supposedly this is the content that people want to get out. Um, this is... Channel's name is Dash Glitch. Um, go check it out. Uh, his channel i suppose it has a bunch of bit wigs our community on. we've had time to reflect on last week's spectral suite announcement and the responses from our community we apologize for how we handled this and want to make this right spectral suite is now part of bitwig studio 4.4 which has an official release date of october 5th 2022 anyone with a current upgrade plan now owns bitwig studio 4.4 and the four Spectral Suite devices. We'll contact everyone who purchased Spectral Suite to offer a choice of a refund or an extension of yeah, well, including device than we so. can say. Pretty good news. Firstly, they're saying that the Spectral Suite will be included as part of Bitwig Studio 4.4. It looks like they've also backdated the release of 4.4 uh, to October 5th, and that's obviously to take into account any of the people that were still on the upgrade plan when the uh, announcement was made, um, and which I think is, you know, step one to try and make things right. I think the fact that they were quiet until today, you know, almost a week, I think it was six days since the original announcement, I think the fact that they were quiet until now was they obviously had to go in and develop things further so that they could actually release Bitwig 4.4. Obviously, they weren't planning to release this update now. They had released 4.3.9 last week. So obviously, you know, they called in the team and said, listen, we have to make things right. Let's, you know, work overtime or whatever the case is. I'm just speculating at this point. Like I said, not making excuses, um, but I'm just throwing information out there. And it looks like they've kind of got things together in time to release an update, which is Bitwig 4.4. I think the other really key piece of information here is the fact that it says moving forward all of our Bitwig Studio feature development including devices will be covered by the 12-month upgrade plan so that basically answers most people's concerns about the transparency of what's happening with the future and I think it's really great the fact that they actually responded in a way that a lot of people at one point it was kind of like wishful thinking but they've actually responded in a way which I think a lot of people are very happy with. So that, yeah, that means if you do own the upgrade plan, you now have access to the Spectral Suite devices. If you bought the Spectral Suite devices, Bitwig will offer you a refund. So it looks like pretty much it's a win-win situation for everybody at this point. And I think the fact that we now sit at a point where Bitwig listens to the community, you know, especially in situations which are quite dire, um, I think that's another win in the situation. So. Yeah, thank you, Bitwig, for responding uh, the way that uh, we had all pretty much hoped that you did, uh, or just responding at all. I think that's a great thing to show. Right, well, I guess this was kind of content light. Um, good thing he had the clickbait picture at the beginning of this thing. Anyway, so looks like Bitwig did 
something nice. I, I, I think, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know how you're supposed to stay in business anymore. I don't know how well, in this world it's kind of depressing. I don't know how anybody's supposed to have a house or, or food or anything anymore. It's so crazy expensive. But uh, it looks like Bitwig did what um, you would have hoped they would do. So here's my uh, here's a post I made. Um, I put up some uh, some videos showing some. Well, in fact, let me just. Um, I can actually pull this up. Let me um, let me pull this up. So I'm not sure how well this is going to work, but um, okay. So here's a here's a sound with a cable. I'm not sure I like this the width of this uh, thing here. I'm just going to turn this down a little bit. Okay, that's that's a guitar plugged in. Here's the same preset with the um, EMG seven hundred seven. I'm playing the same thing. Might be a little bit hard to hear. Let me. Um... I don't know if you can hear that chattering that's happening. So that's with the uh, Line 6 Relay G50 wireless. See, it's not there in the cable. Initially, I'm thinking, you know, it's it's got to be the volume of these uh, pickups because, uh, like it or not, this, um, it lights up red. The, uh, the clip light indicator on the um, Line 6 uh, receiver. And there's no gain control on the transmitter. I think we talked about this a little bit, but um, but here's a much quieter pickup. This is like a, a passive Ibanez artist pickup. It's a humbucker, but it's it's nowhere near the volume of this EMG. And it's making the same sort of problem. Uh, so I had asked, and um, actually there was a... Digital Igloo, uh, I think it's that Eric guy who works for Line 6. Really cool guy. He, um, you know, anytime I want to get a hold of Line 6, I just, you know, I kind of ask him. <laughs> uh, Eric Eric Klein, I think is his name. Um, and he actually uh, went to the to the techs at Line 6, and, and I had done this before as well, and I got pretty much the same answer. But, but it's really cool that he checked. Um, he said, um, he got a message back, said, uh, unfortunately, if the user is encountering clipping with certain instrument, then that instrument may be an outlier. Uh, I don't agree. Um, this is happening on very quiet, passive pickups as well. Um, if he wants to continue using that instrument with the wireless gear, he may need to figure out a way to attenuate, uh, adding a pad in line or turning down his volume pod. I had actually asked them about how to build a, such a pad. Uh, I spe spoke briefly with the electrical engineer. He mentioned that the relay transmitter should be able to handle 6.25 volts peak to peak. And it's exceedingly rare for guitars to have a higher output than six volts peak, peak to peak. Um, so what? Uh, I, uh, so, so I, I kind of wanted to know. Um, yeah. So, so EMG in certain specification says that the the voltage can go to 4.5 volts um it's still well under the six volts uh unless that's really three volts peak to peak or three volts and uh so 4.5 volts would be uh nine volts peak to peak or i don't know um or if the five four point five 4.5 volts is peak to peak that that would be above, I, I don't know how they're measuring this. And, and that's, that's one of the things I'm upset about because if I go to Duncan, um, they actually released their millivolt outputs and, um, the Seymour Duncan distortion pickup at 792, that's also turning the, the line six thing red. Um, but you know, I have blackouts, right? So let me, let me find that. I have uh, blackouts on one of my guitars. Uh, so they're saying like, you know, it's pretty freaking loud, man. Uh, 1598 millivolts, uh, 1600 millivolts. Now I've seen more realistic 
EMGs, like right here, peak output voltage, uh, 1750 millivolts. And that's really what I'm seeing. I don't think it's putting out 4.5 volts. Uh, I think it's more like 1.8 volts. But uh, one of the things I wanted to know, um, and I even asked, uh, you know, if someone please tries, try it with your own pickups. You know, let me know if, if you have a Line 6 relay, let me know if that thing goes red with your regular passive pickups. Uh, so I said, for the record, I have guitars with EMG 707s, EMG 81, EMG 85s, and Duncan Blackouts. All of these make the red clipping light go on. I have a thread about TGP. About, about, about. Uh, I'd love to hear from some other EMG player that has a relay on whether or not there's lights up red. Also, did they happen to say what voltage level the clipping LED come, should come on? Because that, that's interesting. You know, I'm, I'm chasing down a bunch of different things. How audible is the clipping? Not so much. But it is making that weird problem that you guys heard, and um, it's not happening on a cable. And I turned the cable tone all the way down to like 100 feet, and um, yeah, it, it, it goes away, but it's, it's still there. Uh, you just don't hear it as much because I'm taking out the treble, and that's what that cable tone does. But um, I don't think you can call an EMG an outlier. This is a pickup that a lot of us are using, especially people who use these Line 6 relays. You know, this is especially, let's, let's just face it, most of the Line 6 guys are metalheads, whatever. They're going to use EMGs, they're going to use blackouts, they're going to use really loud pickups. Um, and so they say, are, are you hearing clipping? If not, I wouldn't worry too much about it. If you're audis, audibly noticing clipping from a variety of guitars, then that sounds like a service issue, sorry. Um, and somebody else says, you know, if it's just an LED blinking, I'd probably move on to the next problem and call it good. I would too, but, um, you know, it's not. And, and it's because I, I showed um, that noise there. So it'd be nice if EMG put out levels that we could actually use um, in, in their specs. If I go to their specs, um, EMG pickups, let's go to one of their um, things, guitar. I'm going to go to seven, eight, nine string. And um, there's a stupid pop up. Here's a 707 right here. So let's see if they have. Um, there's maybe in the 707 instructions. Be nice to see some specs. Okay, so here we go. Um, output voltage strum, 4.5 volts, or is, I don't even know if that's a volt. What is that? It just says 4.5. I don't know what that means. Could mean volts. It says output voltage. So is that peak to peak? Is that peak? Um, but 4.5 volts, man, that's a lot. I don't think it's putting out that much. I, I, I'm not seeing it. I'm seeing like 1800 millivolts. Um, but I suppose you got a nine volt battery and you could put out half of that as the as one of the peaks um maybe it is 4.5 volts i don't know i don't see 4.5 volts and like i say this thing, same thing is happening at uh with passive pickups um but you know it is nice that duncan's got their their output there um so i'm looking at other wirelesses and uh still in our infinite wisdom um you know, I don't know if you remember, not to get too political, but we had a president who, um, even if you hated him, hopefully the idea that he was going to bring manufacturing back to America was a good thing. I, the idea, I right, listen, I, I know, you know, we are musicians and we want peace and whatever else, but the idea that you're going to have a com country that you're at war with build and sell you the bullets for your guns that you would have to use to defend yourself, for your army and stuff. It sounds insane. And you may not think that we're in that situation, but we are. Uh, because these chips are every bit as important as bullets. And we have a hostile country um, who has already shown that even without bad intentions, um, when we needed uh, PPE, remember at the very beginning of the Backstreet Boys reunion tour where we needed masks and um, gloves and things like that? And they turned around ships 
that had these products on them because they needed them for their own people. And I don't know that I can blame them for that, but shouldn't we be building this stuff ourselves? I mean, it, we made a big deal about having these uh, car companies make these ventilators that we needed, you know? I mean, we probably should be building our own chips. And again, for, you know, that's for like the really big deal hospital and military and all that stuff. But man, at our level, do we feel it? I tried to order a bunch of wirelesses over the last couple of days and every single one of them got a refund due to out of stock. We're not going to see these things because there's no chips, man. Everything's, everything's out. Um, but there was a thread about the, um, you know, this guy said, I'm, I'm getting rid of my GLX D16, which is a very popular, sure, wireless, really good unit um, that they've discontinued. Um, so you want to do, you know, do I get an SLX D14 or a BLX14? And, um, you know, for one thing, I, thankfully, we're moving away from 2.4 gigahertz wireless. There's other frequencies we can be in. And if you don't know, the reason you don't want to be in that 2.4 gigahertz band uh just like with our mixers and stuff which is sad but um 2.4 and 5g are where all the cell phones and everything else in the universe are hanging out at so you know it's not that we don't have good discrimination we do but um boy it's cr crowded over there it'd be nice to get out of that band and you know people are asking you know when we get out of here uh where are we going and I want to ask you guys, um, is analog wireless still a thing? Because there's a lot of analog wireless devices for sale. In fact, the, the most expensive of them, um, if I just go with Sure and uh, Sennheiser and I take away in stock, because and I'll show you that later. Um, the EW100, I think, is the is one of the more expensive ones. It's so $680. I mean, ouch, that's expensive, man. I mean, shouldn't wirelesses be dirt cheap at this point? They, they should. Uh, as far as I know, this one is, yeah, analog. So here's a $680 wireless, and it's analog. It's, it's operating the 500 megahertz range instead of the 2.4 gigahertz range. And it has impressive specs. But how do these things sound anymore? You know, I mean, back then people used to complain about the sound of like these cheap Sure wirelesses. I had one. I thought it was fine back in the day. Now I'm running this relay and I couldn't be happier except for this, um, you know, the fact that it died on me kind of right away. And uh, I've had some dropouts, but um, it sounds pretty good except for this dynamic problem we're having. And that's why I want to try one of these other wirelesses. But holy hell, man, they are expensive. And... Um, you know, here we got like the uh, the the really handy type, like the uh, X vibes and stuff. Um, so the XSWD, um, where you know you you, you charge it and uh, well, what is the difference between the XSWD and uh, XSWD instrument base? One's like a pedal board thing. You um, you know, like you don't have to wear a belt pack anymore. You just have this thing that plugs into the guitar, and that's it. It's pretty handy. I tried them, the X5 style. I tried the Joyo one, the Lakato. We talked about it. It's such a handy form factor. Line 6 has one called the G10 that does the same thing. But, um, you know, without a trim control that you can turn down, I don't I don't know that I really want to use these things. And uh, they're at 2.4 gigahertz as well, so that's kind of a, a, a showstopper. But um, fact is, some of these things are analog, uh, the Sure BL14, BLX14, I think that's the cheaper one. Um, they're analog. There's a Sennheiser XSW2 and XSW1. I don't know the difference between them. They are also analog. Um, the SLXD is the new digital one uh, from Sure. I, I, I don't know why that some of these things cost so goddamn much. Um, the Sure SLXD, let me find it. SLX. So there's an SLX 14 that's analog. It's $560 for the guitar one. Um, here's the SLX D. It is, all right, well, that's the expensive one. Let me find that. Here we go. Um, no, we don't. Where is it? It says guitar wireless, but it comes with an SM98. That's not, 
Okay, here we go. Six hundred fifty bucks for the SLX D fourteen, um, and this one actually has a trim control. It looks really chintzy compared to um, like the the relays or or the GLX fourteen was. It, these these transmitters look like you're just gonna bust them. They seem like cheap, weak plastic. Uh, but inside, as far as I know, they do have a um, a trim control on these things. Let's let's look real quick. Um, sure, SLXD manual. Let me see if we can find the inside of this thing. Um, so XLXD user guide, uh, a transmitter. Let's see where where, where can we see the transmitter um, setting up okay here we go is this um looks like there's a uh, uh how do i zoom in so let's see match select the power level no um Transmitter. I swear there was a setting for for the gain. There's a trim. Sound check and gain adjustment. Okay. Um, adjust the gain to keep the audio indicator. So that's oh that's for the receiver. But where do you ch how do you change the gain on the transmitter? Not seeing it. Um, wearing the body pack transmitter. Uh, really just want to see a picture of the inside of this thing. Hardware interface. It's the receiver. Sound check and gain adjustment. Um, So it looks like you send the gain on the uh, on the receiver, but I swear there's a way to change the gain on the transmitter. So here's here's the specs anyway. Um, there was a maximum input, I think. And it's weird because the PGX, the cheaper one, had a, a little bit more gain. Okay, so audio output gain adjustment range so i think this is for the receiver minus 18 to plus 42 uh that's nice that that's there but um if it distorts on the transmitter that would be a problem so here's some um, maximum input level 8.2 dbv 2.57 volts rms so if we go to a um voltage to dbv calculator i know i saw one that was actually decent Is this the one? DBV. Let's go. F so if we were to go with that 4.5 volts, um, 13.06 DBV, that's way over it. But if we went more with the 1.8 that, that I'm really seeing, um, the 1800 millivolts or whatever, 7.3, 5.1 uh, DBV. So that's well underneath this. Um, so, uh, 7.2 volts peak to peak. Um, that's way underneath the, uh, I mean, that's, that's above the, what EMG says they would do at 4.5 volts, unless that 4.5 volts is actually nine volts peak to peak, which would be over it. But I, I don't think it's going to be. So this, this looks like it would cover it. But, uh, again, I tried to order one. There's, there's none in stock. Um, but. Uh, it seems like a bunch of these devices actually had uh, trim controls. It's amazing that I'm having so much trouble seeing the inside of this thing. Let's let's look and see if we can't see the Sure SLXD transmitter. Let's see if somebody's got a, a picture of the inputs of this thing. Um So here's the 
There it is. But are we going to see the inside of it? I want to see. I want to see this whole thing here. It's it's amazing how hard it is to get some of this information. Um, product details. Can we just see pictures of it? Um, that's the likes the user's guide. I don't really want to see that. I want to see. Let's see a picture of it. Uh, maybe it's in the quick start guide. Let's see. Or is this the thing we already looked at? Yeah, that's useless. All right. Um, user guide. Ah, it looks like the same thing. Shoot. Overview. I mean, I really just want to see the freaking picture of this thing. Um, oh, there's got to be more. Let's go to visit this one. No. Oh, these pictures are useless. See, I love when people tell you to Google stuff because it, it's not really going to be there. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm having trouble seeing the insides of this thing. So is there really no way to see? see this is a quick start guide again. Uh, sound check and gain adjustment. Again, that looks like, is there a gain adjustment on the transmitter? That's that's what I need to know. So, you know, if, if it's got that much headroom, then all you really need to do is turn down the receiver. But I don't trust it. Uh, on the line six, you can't do either one. Uh, push the control knob. Turn on the transmitter. I mean, I, I would love to see more pictures of this um, of this thing. I, I think on the BLX and the analog ones, there's actually a trim pot that you turn. Um, sound check and gain adjustment. So I don't know that there's actually a, a gain control on this transmitter. Sorry to take that down such a rabbit hole. But again, this is what kills me. It's, it's so hard to get this kind of information. So... Assuming that this one ain't gonna clip out on you, let me um, let me go back on here and show you something. So this is what I ran into. This is just Sweetwater, but I mean it's I'm seeing this everywhere. So I'm gonna click um, in stock right here. So the 2.4 gigahertz thing is still here, but I don't give a crap about that. So the EW100, um, I don't know, but it's so expensive for an analog setup uh this one it it seems like it does have a, a gain control let's let's take a look um see if we see some pictures of the side of this transmitter uh, i swear yeah what is that so there's a set button um See in this AF peak, I think that that has to do with if you're if you're clipping the unit itself, and I think that there's a way to deal with that. Oh, oh where is this right here? I thought that there's a switch or something on this one. Maybe not. Again. So I don't know. Maybe there's no gain setting on this. Anyway. Um, you know, six hundred eighty dollars for an analog wireless in this day and age—it's kind of crazy. Um, even the it's supposedly a junk one. Um, well, that's a let's just say microphone system. We need the guitar one. Uh, Three hundred dollars for the XSW one, which is an analog one. I don't know if that's the same transmitter as in these uh, more expensive ones. I don't think so. But if you're noticing this. Most of this stuff is out of stock. So the only, there's an SLX 14, the analog version of the Shure. They've got those for sale. Um, maybe the PGXD. I don't think so, though. This is the mic one. I actually couldn't find the guitar one for sale. Uh, I got that one refunded when I tried to buy it. 
uh, EW500, again, it's like $850 for an analog Sennheiser one. There really isn't much out there. The, the, um, it's like everything's out of stock. I mean, that, that was my rant about the chips. We need to be making our own chips. Uh, what's that Poonin just saying F something? Um, again, the, the, the pedal board looking ones, those are 2.4 gigahertz. The, the handy like X5 one, but you know, I buy those for $30 off Amazon. Those things are at 2.4 or, um, 800 or, or 5.8, uh, 5G. Um, let me see. Anyway, um, yeah, let me get off of here in a second. Sorry. Hello? All right. Um, so anyway, these I I want to order some of these wirelesses, try them out, but god damn, they're expensive. You think these would be so much cheaper by now? Uh, the ones that really are affordable, none of them are in stock. Uh, the PGX D14, I'm pretty sure that one has a gain control. It actually said it can handle a higher voltage than the SLXD. Uh, but any of these, God, they're expensive. Um, and if they're not available anyway, it kind of doesn't matter. Uh, so I want to go to this um, this post here. Uh, so this guy says, well... Pursuing rigorous gain staging on my music has certainly taught me one thing, how to make it flat and boring sounding. And so we're like, what? Um, so somebody properly said, uh, getting all your gain staging set up isn't mixing. Um, so he's saying, uh, there's only a few ways to come to the conclusion that gain staging would change your mix quality. Are you using dynamics processing for gain staging? And uh, the part that I circled here was what the original poster said, um, why would I want to pull down the faders after adjusting the item gain? Uh, let's see. Uh, my dad was looking for something when he teaches dance, and I advised him to get one of the BLX-15, I think, lavalier headset mic. I think it sure is good. Yeah, the BLX-14 is one of the ones I'd like to try out. Uh, that's the cheapest analog one they got, and it's it's holy shit money still. But um, it looked good to me. I, I, I saw... Okay, I, I don't want to call anybody out. There, there was somebody at a forum that was offering advice on the wireless stuff. And um, I don't think he knows what he's talking about. He, he was saying the PGXD was at 2.4 gigs. It's not, it's at uh, it's at a safe, like 500 or 800 megahertz range. Uh, he was saying the BLX 14 is a tone suck. I don't know. I, I'd, I'd like to try it. I'm sure it's better than the wirelesses I used to use back in the day. It's an analog one, but I'd like to try the BLX 14 if I can find one. There's one for sale on the Big Island right now, a used one. I don't know that I want to really try it in a way that I can't turn it back. So I've, I've been going back and forth with Sweetwater to see what I could actually order at this point that's in stock and what I, if I can send it back. Um, I'm going to be attempting to install a Mac um, version of Serato Pitch and Time. And uh, you guys know how much trouble I have with... Um, the security crap on a Mac. So we'll see how that works. But anyway, so this guy asked, why would I want to pull down the faders after adjusting the item gain? Um, so that was like the gain staging. I think this guy, it seems like this guy thought that gain staging meant, you know, you, you get your thing at a certain level and you leave it there. And then, yeah, you, you do get a flat and boring sounding mix because you didn't actually mix. Um, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that, uh, we're misunderstanding, but let me read this again. So he says, uh, why would I want to pull down the faders after adjusting the item gain? And somebody else answered, so you can start pushing up faders to mix. I suppose you don't have to start from silence, but just gain staging your files isn't going to make anything sound good. And that's a, that's a big thing about gain staging. I think we've talked about it several times. Um, gain staging in digital, uh, it's not necessarily even a thing, but there, there is a gain staging. Okay. Think about, Everybody telling you to, to run your your stuff so that your your peak is at like zero decibels full scale to your converters. If your converters are set for like minus 18 or minus 15 equals zero VU, that means that minus 15 or minus 18 is your normal plus four operating level that you'd be running your, your gear at. You wouldn't take your plus four gear and then crank it up another 15 decibels to get it to tape. 
unless you're trying to distort something, which you might be. Um, expecting a minus 10 device, like a prosumer device or consumer device, to go from minus 10, which is like really minus 12, uh, expecting to put like 20 or 30 decibels of gain into the thing and it's going to sound good, that's not proper gain staging. I mean, you you want to be at whatever your zero is at. A digital level is fine. You, you, you don't, you're not going to get that tape noise or tape hiss, so don't worry about it. Um, so if you are gain staging by just cranking everything up to zero dBFS, yeah, you're going to have problems because most of that device can't operate at that level anyway. So um, let me, who's that? No, that's one of the teachers. Um, but gain staging when these guys are all out trying to make zeros and everything and trying to make this huge deal about stuff. I wouldn't worry about it. Get it to the proper operating level that you're supposed to be at, and um, you should be okay. Trying to crank your thing up 30 decibels in order to do whatever craziness you read in some forum someplace, that's probably not going to sound okay. But understand that gain staging is, is getting your signals to the proper operating levels. It's not a mix. That's that's where you start your faders, and then you start moving them up and down. So Poonin just saying... Um, I built a karaoke rig into a rifle case for dad. And he wanted to get a couple more mics like that, but they were all out of stock. Yeah. Uh, I think it was that when it was then, it, it's got a really nice mic that comes with an excellent noise rejection. It's available in many frequencies. Um, I'm just looking for guitar wirelesses because of this uh, problem. I don't know if you heard it at the beginning when um, this is what I'm getting from a Line 6 relay. Uh, this weird clacky chattering noise should sound like that and um even when i ran a, a lower gain pickup it's doing the same thing as long as it goes red it makes that problem let me uh, i gotta open the door we i might be uh i might be attempting to do just a little mac install on the air here uh hopefully with your um with your guys help uh, dealing with the mac uh, paranoia nonsense um one of the things that kills me and uh i actually put people on ignore for this i'm I'm getting better at just ignoring people because, um, um, you know, I, like I made that thread, uh, does anyone make a, something that can handle EMGs, a wireless? And so many people get on and say, hey, why don't you just turn your guitar down? Listen, dumb asses, you're not going to try and get your guitar to the, and we had this talk about padding down stuff. A pad would make sense. Turning your guitar, trying to trying to turn your guitar to the right level at exactly at the right time every time you turn your guitar on is a non-starter. We just need something that can handle this level. And it's not like EMGs are rare in the world of uh, metal and wirelesses and stuff. Tons of people got loud pickups. It's not just the EMGs that are, that are doing this. And again, like I'm showing here, this is a very quiet Ibanez passive pickup that's still lighting that thing up red. So... Trim control. I'm, I'm surprised Line 6. I'm honestly surprised that uh, Line 6 doesn't have a trim control or a pad or something. It's not like I'm the first person in the world to ever use an EMG with a Line 6 wireless. I mean, get out of here. And um, lots of times people tell me it's it's just my problem. It's not. It's, this is I've tested this across several things. Um, but yeah, it's like here's a couple people ask this. I might be stating the obvious, but would it work if you turn the volume knob on the guitar down um yeah it would but you don't just turn guitar volumes down i mean and you, you guys might know mine are bypass so they're up all the way all the time um and i say you know it wouldn't matter if you turned it down anyway if it's you know uh somebody what do you say um is there a trim pot on the preamp yeah but um uh, that wouldn't matter if it's already distorted at the at the transmitter and so somebody's saying turn it down at the transmitter um I'm uh, sorry, I, I have to put you guys on ignore if they're asking that kind of thing. Um, the solution isn't to turn your guitar down. It's to have a, a, a wireless unit that can handle the input that you're you're putting out. Um, you know, like the Helix has a pad control on it in case there's a loud pickup. And, and I do use that, and it works. So... Um, it looks like the BLX14 that, that Poonin's just talking about here, the BLX14 manual. Let me see, BLX14 manual. So there's an R version and there's a not R version. The R version is rack mount. It's not going to fit on my pedal board. 
Um, but I seen that people are showing how you can put it underneath your pedal board and just stick the antennas out. So that, that might be an, um, an option, but, um, if I go to the, uh, BLXR user guide here, and hopefully this isn't going to be as horrible as the other ones where you can't see what the hell's inside that thing. Um, so if I look on the transmitter, yeah, here we go. If I look on the transmitter here, uh, I don't know how to, um, I guess I should have downloaded the, the PDF, but there's an actually a gain control. Let me, let me download the PDF here. Cause this is, this is ridiculous. Um, PLX wireless system. Uh, here we go. So if I zoom way the hell in on here, uh, there's a group button, a channel button and a, um, a trim pot. And this trim pot, let's see what it does. Um, features, uh, power button, group and channel button, audio LED indicates the strength of the incoming audio signal, green for normal and red for overload. Um, where's the uh, BLX21 or 2? I don't know what the difference is. Different transmitters or something. Um, power button, group button, channel button. I see that it's got a knob. Uh, audio audio gain adjustment. Rotate to increase or decrease transmitter gain. Um, yeah, think think for guitar or can you just get a belt pack with a different cable instead of a lavalier? Yeah, so the BLX14 has a guitar version. It's this one right here. Uh, BLX1... Um, and uh, I saw there was like a gain range adjustment on here. Where is this in the specs or something? This one actually looks pretty good. That's all. I want to give it a try if I can find one uh, for sale. Um, maybe I put the R version in. I don't know. Where is it? Uh, input impedance transmitter gain adjustment range twenty six decibels. So yeah, here we go. Audio input level. Minus 16 dBV, maximum plus 10 dBV, maximum, I don't know. So it says it's 26 decibel gain range. 10 dBV, uh, we just saw in the calculator that that's going to be fine even for the CMG, probably. Um, adding a rack to the pedal board, yeah, oddly enough, that sounds right up my alley, maybe a force space. Um but, you know, it, it doesn't have to be the rack mount version. Any of them are actually pretty big, like the the uh, the receiver. It's, it's much bigger. The G, the Line 6 G50 and, and the GLX from Sure and stuff like that, they look like pedal boards. They're, they're small. They fit in there. But um, the rack mount ones, people are saying that they stick them underneath their pedal board and just, uh, you know, hot glue them to the top or something. I could give that a try. But um, so I, I would like to get my hands on one of these BLX 14s. It's just, man, everything is out of stock. And the PGX D14 looked good as well. Uh, I don't know how bad analog ones are. I, I wouldn't mind trying an analog unit out. Um, I'm totally going to build a rack inside the pedal board sometime in the next month. That would really stick it to the pedal weenies. I would I would crack up if you stuck some uh, multi-effects unit, like a rack uh, Axe effects or something like that. I mean, for what people pay for their pedals, they, they could easily um, buy one of these rack effects, axe effects things. And, uh, you know, you have all the pedals you ever wanted in, in one switch there. Uh, let's see. There's supposed to be somebody here to try and install something. I guess um, I think I'm actually pretty good. Uh, we talked about the gain staging. We talked about the wirelesses. And we talked about uh, the Bitwig situation, which seems to have cleared up nicely. So I think I'm going to take off. I'll um, be back later, actually, to mix some drums.